Our reading this morning comes from John's Gospel, the 10th chapter, and we have it on the screen. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone... <laughs> I feel like that sometimes, don't you? Jesus said, very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hears his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Here ends our reading. Oh, there's more. Sorry about that. I, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The sheep and shepherd image is a beautiful thing, isn't it? Sheep need a shepherd, and a shepherd needs sheep. It's a symbiotic relationship. Most of us tend to sh see sheep as cute and cuddly, harmless and helpful. We tend to view sheep like this. Can I have an aww? Isn't she cute? I'll set her up here so you can keep an eye on her. I believe Jesus had something very special in mind when he uses the metaphor of sheep and a shepherd. Did you know that dogs were domesticated first before sheep and goats? Dogs make great companions. They're loyal through and through. My dog wants to be with me wherever I am. I mean, he's right there. If I'm watching TV, he's either in the seat with me or on the floor beside me. If I'm fixing something in the kitchen, a snack or dinner or sitting down at the table, he's right there to clean up the crumbs. If I'm working on the computer, he's somewhere in the room curled up, guaranteed. If I come out of the bathroom, he's waiting for me. If I leave for two if I leave the house for two minutes, two days, two weeks, or two months, he greets me just the same when I come in the house, barking and wagging from head to toe and tail and just jumping around, welcoming me the same way, no matter how long I'm gone. Dogs are loyal and dedicated. There is nothing like having a dog as a companion. I wonder why Jesus uses the sheep and shepherd metaphor and not the dog and master metaphor. Maybe it's because sheep need a shepherd. Dogs don't need a master. I'm going to highlight four things about sheep for us here this morning. Each one begins with the letter D. First, sheep are dumb. Sheep have this habit of just 
munching and munching and munching, feeding themselves, just wandering around. And, and they're fine if they stay in the pasture. But, but if the gate is open, they'll wander right out of the pasture, right up on the highway, and get run over before they even know what happened to them. Sheep will follow the flock blindlessly wherever the flock goes, even if it's straight to the slaughterhouse, even if it's over the edge of a cliff. Sheep are dumb. Second, sheep are directionless. If a sheep wanders off from the flock, it has a very slim chance of finding its way back to the flock. Sheep have no sense of direction. They won't panic, but they don't do a whole lot to get unlost either. They'll just go on their way, not making much effort to find their way back to the flock. And since they're directionless, they can't even find their own food and drink. They need the shepherd to lead them to find green pastures with food and water. Left on its own, a sheep is sure to die in the wilderness. Sheep are directionless. And third, sheep are defenseless. They don't have claws or fangs or stingers or wings or camouflage or a menacing growl. When confronted with danger, a sheep will run with the herd, hoping there's somebody slower behind them. That's how sheep are. If they're attacked, they're doomed. When sheep get particularly wooly, which they do, it, believe it or not, they have this tendency to fall over and they can't right themselves up, kind of like a turtle. They need someone to help them stand up right again. <clears throat> Sheep are defenseless. So there you have it. Sheep are dumb. Sheep are directionless. And sheep are defenseless. But there's one more thing about sheep. They have this remarkable talent to distinguish human voices. They even, as research shows, they can distinguish sheep's faces. They can distinguish the shepherd's face. Sheep are dependent. They are dependent on the flock and they're dependent on their shepherd for life. Jesus refers to us as sheep and he the shepherd. Now, if someone were to describe you as dumb, defenseless, directionless, and dependent on someone else for your life, you wouldn't be very honored, would you? I sure wouldn't. If we're honest and we think about it, Jesus' words are a little offensive here this morning, aren't they? I mean, who wants to be a sheep? Ask any child what animal they'd like to be. They'll probably say, I'd like to be a lion or a tiger or an eagle. Chances are they aren't going to say, you know, I'd like to be a sheep. Bah. Maybe it's not so much that Jesus thinks so little of us. Maybe it's we think too much of ourselves. Now just bear with me here for a minute. Self-esteem is a beautiful thing. Parents, we should raise our children to be confident and competent in life. We need to celebrate our gifts and skills and abilities and the talents that God has given each one of us. But when it comes to navigating our way through life, many of us overestimate our abilities. I know I sure do. 
We're probably more like sheep than we care to admit. I know I sure am. I also think we underestimate the dangerous world in which we live. We live in a very dangerous world. It's a wilderness out there. It is not safe to try to go it alone on this journey called life. We face real temptations every day that want to entice us into the direction of disaster. And left on our own, we're doomed just like sheep. Why does Jesus call us sheep? That's what I want to know. Because the world is a dangerous wilderness. Not to scare you, we live our lives in the world, and as we do, we need a shepherd to guide us, to protect us, and to provide for us. Wasn't it awesome to see our seven young people come up and make their confirmation this morning? A lot of what happened up here this morning was their idea. This is how they wanted it to go down here this morning. For some of them, in this spiritual journey here this morning, this is freedom, baby. They won't admit that. But man, they're so glad today is come and gone. Wow. Freedom. But in reality, what they're really saying here this morning is that they want to take a greater responsibility in their own faith development. And that means... This is just the beginning. We celebrate with them in this major step as sheep within the fold, reminding them and us that too much freedom is not a good thing. Real faith maturity means being dependent on Jesus within the flock. Proverbs 3 sums it up very well. Listen to these words. It's a summation of Proverbs 3. Listen to these words. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go. He is the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run from evil, run to God. Those are great words for us to consider here this morning as sheep within the fold of Jesus' flock. Run to God, run from evil. Listen to God's voice in everything you do and everywhere you go. You know what I think the problem is? We're not real good at listening especially when it comes to listening to God in prayer, in Scripture, and in worship. We just aren't real good at listening, are we? Just ask my wife. She'll tell you. I'm a model example here this morning. We're often waiting for the other person to stop talking so we can share what we're thinking about, and we're not really listening. Or better yet, we assume that if God hasn't answered our prayers, God's not listening. I love the funny story of the guy who thought his wife was starting to lose her hearing. So he thought he'd do a little test. They were sitting at home one night. He was in one side of the room, and she was sitting with her back to him. So he thought, well, I'll see if she can hear me, if she's listening. So he whispers, can you hear me? Nothing. He goes a little closer, and he says, can you hear me? Nothing. A little closer. Can you hear me? Nothing. He walks right up behind her and whispers again, Can you hear me? She whips around and says, For the fourth time, yes. <laughs> Folks, God is still speaking to you and to me in this place. Somehow we need to find a way to block out all the other voices that are vying for our attention. 
As we move into the future, we are going to be called into a deeper dependence on Jesus, the good shepherd within this flock. That means more than ever, we are being called into new ways of seeing ourselves and the world around us. That means more than ever, we're going to need to listen to the voice of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. I don't know about you. But I can't wait to see where Jesus is going to lead us next. And the people of God said, Amen. So be it.